of Her Hoop Stats Unplugged. As always, you're here with Megan Gower. I'm here today with Calvin Wetzel. Hey, Calvin, how's it going? Hey, I'm good, Megan. How are you doing? Doing well. It is like two weeks from March. That's crazy. I don't know how we got there, but it's two weeks to March. <laughs> so we are in the home stretch of the season. But we're going to shake things up a little bit today. We're not really going to talk about all the games that have been on. Granted, there's plen- plenty of interesting things happening. But Calvin's been doing a lot of betting on the NCAA women's basketball side. I know nothing about betting. So I'm going to guess that I'm not the only person that knows nothing, but is now slightly interested, at least, considering that you can do it on women's sports. And I feel like I, I know enough about what's going on in women's sports that I would be interested in betting. So we're going to do kind of like a... I do not, don't want to insult anyone, but I'm referring to myself here, so I don't feel like I will, like a, a betting for dummies type thing to try to talk about sports betting and how you can go about doing that and what all of it means, because I certainly don't know and I'm trying to learn, so I'm not calling you a dummy, I'm calling myself a dummy, um, so no one needs to get offended by that, but yeah, just going going over some of the stuff that goes into that and then also maybe some of how Calvin's been doing but again you've been making some money I'm pretty sure so <laughs> there's an opportunity <laughs> for sure it's um it's I I kind of always say that it's like the one and only silver lining of women's sports in this case women's basketball not getting enough coverage or attention is that they also don't get enough attention from the sports books which means we can take all their money because sports books <laughs> don't know what they're doing when they set some of the lines and odds. Um, and I kind of hope someday that changes, even though it means we will make less money <laughs> be better for the game in the long run. But as long as that's the case, I'm going to take advantage. <laughs> yeah, as we should. So if anyone's interested in trying to make some money, it's kind of a good time to do that on the woman's side, at least. So we're going to go into that. I'm trying to think what the best way to start this is because I, like I said, literally know nothing. <laughs> I try to follow it and I cannot. So <laughs> we're going to learn together. Um, maybe starting with just like the basics. Like I know there's different things you can bet on. You can bet on the over, you can bet on the under, you can bet on the spread. But like maybe let's take it like really basic elementary level and just kind of break down what some of those things mean and what you can actually bet on from a women's basketball standpoint. Yeah. So there's really three different kind of main ways or main categories that you can bet on a single game. Um, and like you said, the over or the under is one of them, like the total, just how many points are going to be scored combined between both teams in the game, is it going to be an offensive game or defensive game. Um, and then you have the money line is the concept is the easiest by far. It's just who's going to win the game. Um, but that we can get into in a little bit comes with odds, because obviously if you have a game like earlier tonight, South Carolina just beat Auburn and they're not going to pay you the same amount if South Carolina wins versus if Auburn wins, because South Carolina is a really easy pick to make <laughs> in winning that game. So the odds are kind of what determines how much money you make. And if you pick a big upset, obviously you make a lot more money than if you pick a huge favorite that everyone knew was going to win. Um, that's the, that's the tricky part, but that's just picking who's going to win. And then the spread is the third way. And that is basically picking who is going to win after you adjust the winning team score by that amount. So it's kind of like a handicap. I think the spread on that South Carolina Auburn game today was 28.5, which means like is South Carolina going to win by more than 28.5 or are they going to win like by less than 28.5? And that is much tougher to pick because that's a lot more 50, 50 than are they going to win the game or not? Um, So, so those ones usually pay approximately or exactly the same amount on both sides. Um, So those are, yeah, those are basically the three ways to do it. You have the totals, you have who's going to win, and then you have um, the the spread is, is the favorite going to win by more or less than a certain amount. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. So basically three ways to go about it. Obviously different odds on all of those things, like you said, but three ways to handle it. I'm just curious, how much have you been using like the Hoops Sets model to try to guess like where you should 
on which side you should bet because I know we have like our final scores and you can see like, you know, does this team actually score 70 points a game or do they average 60 a game and things like that? Yeah, I actually use the model a lot. Like it's, I pretty much every game is like, that's my starting point is like, what is our model say? And then from there, um, sometimes I just straight up go with that. Um, but I, I usually look at kind of how each team has been doing uh, with our model. And sometimes, every, you know, our model is like pretty good, obviously, because we're making money. Um, but <laughs> Every you know, there's 356 teams, and every now and then there's a team that for some reason our model can't seem to figure out, and our model either either likes them way too much or doesn't like them enough. And so I try to look at how teams have been doing with our model and and see if I need to adjust. For example, like if, if Jacob Mox listens to this, he's gonna laugh because we talked about this. Elon randomly of all teams, Elon had like 11 straight games where they were way worse than what our model projected <laughs> for some reason. Like our model just had no clue what was going on with Elon. So every game like Elon would be favored by four and our model would say that Elon was gonna win by like nine, but I still didn't bet on Elon because our model likes Elon way too much for no apparent reason. So I adjust a little bit based on things like that. And then sometimes if there's like, a, you know, it's really hard, like you can't track injuries and things like that with some of the like small, smaller teams, but if you have like a pretty high profile game and there's some big players who you know are going to be out, the example I always use is like Iowa State versus Texas, not this uh, this past game yesterday, but the first time they played a few weeks ago when Ashley and Aubrey Jones were out and that became like pretty public earlier in the day. And again, sports books don't pay attention to women's basketball. So the, the spread didn't change, even though one of the best players in the country was not going to be playing, they still had... Iowa State favored by four and a half in that game. So I bet a good amount of money on Texas. And um, obviously Texas won by a lot. So I just, from our model, based on things like that too. So it's not like just blindly going with the model, but it always starts with the model. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense, especially that, I mean, this season especially, it just feels like there's been so many injuries and then like you had that whole stretch in January where everyone had someone out for COVID at some point, it felt like, so lots of <laughs> adjustments definitely have to be made. And yeah, the model is pretty good, but obviously it doesn't capture everything like that. But it, you can't capture everything like that. So it makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's always, and I do think if you, were to kind of just blindly bet on what our model thinks, you would probably come out at least a little bit ahead still. Mm -hmm. um, but I would prefer to place like fewer bets and come out more ahead, like higher percentage. Right. You know I mean? So so I try to like only place ones where I think our model is right and is right like by enough compared to whatever the sports books right. think um, to that I like am pretty confident in it. That's fair. Makes a lot of sense. And for people not who are listening that maybe have no idea what our model is, if you are subscribed to hoopstats.com, we have team ratings for all teams in division one. So all 350 through 360 teams in division one. And then we also have predictions for every single NCAA game. So that's what we're talking about when we're referring to kind of the model and what we're looking at there. So if you haven't checked out the site, you should go check that out. Especially when it comes to making your bracket and everything in three weeks or whatever selection Sunday is. As crazy as that sounds, it'll be useful. Yeah, it's uh that's another really useful application aside from betting is is yeah. filling out your bracket and and I will say our model really liked Arizona last year. Um, so you know, just to you never know, we might be right I, again. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I'm I'm talking it up. I, I should say that I didn't come up with the model, so I'm not. I can't like take all this credit for it. You know, I just have sort of figured out how to use it. But I mean, obviously, Aaron uh, was the big one, but then also Zoe. I know helped them out a lot with the model towards the end of last year. So like, really a bunch of credit goes to them. But yeah, if you just go to our website and go to the schedules page, things towards the right um and look at any given day if you look at a day in the past it'll say like what the prediction was of that game and whether it was right or wrong and then if you look at like today or tomorrow it'll show you what the prediction for every game all the way down the list um that's on the schedule so it's pretty cool yeah exactly and for anyone that's like familiar with ken palm it's very similar to the, the kind of the ken palm schedule pages for each team that you can see everything 
Exactly. Exactly. And you can click on a specific game too, and you can see what the prediction would be if that game were in a different location. So you can right. see any hypothetical, it doesn't have to be a game that's actually on the schedule. You can just look at the hypothetical matchup and see if these teams played at this school or at the other school or on a neutral court, what would the, what would the uh, prediction be? So really you could look at, look at any matchup. Right. So if you want to say like, if South Carolina and Stanford is going to be the national champion, like who has the best odds to win today on a neutral court, you can go look that up even without there being a game on schedule, which is fun. Exactly. Here. exactly. I think about March, <laughs> like we all are. <laughs> <laughs> It's early April if we're talking about championship games, but still. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So like we covered, we've got you can bet on the spread, on the over under, and on the money line. I lost my page here that I was looking at. So from there, how do you go like about deciphering the odds and which ones that you want to put like actually bet on? Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. I'll start with uh, the money lines because the money lines are the one the one of those three where the odds are really important compared to the other ones since the money lines are the ones where most of the time, unless it's a coin flip game, it's not 50-50. So um, you're either going to see a minus or a plus. The, the better team is going to have the minus. Um, and a minus means that you have to bet that amount of money in order to make $100. So I have some of the odds here in front of me right now. Actually. So tonight, there's a game uh, between Hawaii and San Diego. That's one of the few games that hasn't tipped off yet. That's why I'm using a random game. <laughs> <laughs> because it's kind of late. But uh, Hawaii's money line is minus 530, which means that you would have to bet $530 on Hawaii to win in order to win $100. Um, so Hawaii is a big favorite. So obviously you aren't going to come close to doubling your money if they win. Um, and then on the other side, San Diego is an underdog. So they have a plus, plus 390. And that works the opposite way. You have to bet $100 to make that much money. So San Diego, if you bet $100 and they pull the upset, you make $390. So you would almost, uh, like you would over quadruple your money, right? It was almost times five. So um, you know, when you, when you pull, when you pick a big upset and it happens, you obviously do your money multiplies like exponentially so much more than if you pick a favorite money line, because there's so much harder to pick upsets. So, so the minus is bet that much to win a hundred. The plus is bet a hundred to win that much. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. And then, so if you look at something that's like the spread or the over under, how does it work there? Yeah, so it works the same. So you'll often see, again, I have some of these uh, pulled up, minus 110 on both sides is like pretty common, but um, sometimes it's like minus 112 on one side and minus 108 on the other side. It's something like, or like minus 114 and minus 106, but they're always like pretty close to minus 110 on both sides, which means you have to bet 110 to win 100. Um, so Basically, it's a 50-50 thing, right? Whether, whether it's the spread or the total, they set the line where they think is 50-50 to go over or under. And um, if, which means in theory, the break even would be you double your money. Because if it's a 50-50 bet, you double your money, then that's your expected value would be, you know, break even, right? Like 50% chance to double or 50% chance to lose it all. But if they did that, they wouldn't make any money, obviously. So <laughs> they have to pay you a little bit less than double on those sort of 50-50 bets because they take the rest. So that's why it's minus 110, where if you bet 110, instead of making 110, you're only making 100. So what that means is that if you win 51% of, of those bets, you still won't make money. Because again, that's how the sports books make money. <laughs> In order to actually beat them and make money, you end up having to win about 52 and a half percent of those bets. So you have to not just beat them, but you have to beat them by enough to cancel out sort of that money that they take. <laughs> Got it. Makes sense. So yeah, I mean, of course, it's like the casino. They're going to make their money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't, we wouldn't have these options if it wasn't making somebody money. So 
<laughs> you wouldn't, they wouldn't exist if they weren't taken. So, <laughs> you always have to keep that in mind. Uh, like it, you think, you know, there's there's an edge on something. Like I, you know, I think this team has a better chance. Okay, but do they have enough of a better chance to cancel out the money that the sports books are going to take? They call that the juice. Sometimes there, there's a lot of words for it, but uh, you know, they really you really have to have the 52 and a half percent chance of whatever it is to happen to feel confident in betting that. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. All right, so we've gone over kind of what you can bet on and how the odds work. Um, all right. I'm looking at Twitter and if you follow us on Twitter at Her Hoop Stats and you can also follow the Twitter hashtag Wets Bets, which is where Calvin kind of posts a lot of his bets. So if I look at, I don't even know what day this is from, but it looks like there was the Maryland Ohio State game. So I see over, so if you say like over 125.5, that means the total score would be over 125.5. And then, okay, so then we talked about the odds. So that's like negative 110. And then you have three units. So are you just basing, like, do you pick the units based on like how likely you think that is to happen? Like you put more on something you think is more likely to happen? That. Yeah, exactly. So it's funny that you picked that game as an example because that's the I, I never go three units, but that game was honestly <laughs> like a mistake. Like that line was it had to be a glitch or something. It was so yeah, far. I was off gonna say field. a Maryland game that has a line of like 125 oh, definitely yeah. seems like easy money. <laughs> exactly. Ohio State likes to push the pace and score too. So I, that line should have been in the 160s and it ended up there. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> they're usually not as much as they don't know about women's basketball they're usually not like 40 points off but that one was so I had to put extra money on it um usually I go somewhere between like half a unit and two units which units I know you were asking me before we even hopped on here but um a unit is basically like everyone has a different budget a different financial situation right and it wouldn't be fair you know for some rich person to say like oh I made like five thousand dollars betting and then someone who like barely has any money and is betting like five bucks on games to say like, you know, oh, I made 30 bucks. And to say that this first person was a, like better at mm -hmm. picking games is that, you know, if you bet more money, you make more money. So it's just a way to like standardize across no matter what your budget and what your, you know, finances are, whatever amount that you feel like comfortable putting uh, on one game would be like a unit. So for some people, maybe that's like five bucks or 10 bucks for some people, maybe they're, you know, they're in a good spot and they feel pretty confident. So they put like a hundred dollars on every game, but whatever it is, like that's a unit. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, how confident I am. Um, obviously I'm confident enough to put money down on any of these, but some of them I'm like, eh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but I do think this is going to happen. I'll put half a unit all the way up to some of them that I feel like this is really really good i'm gonna put like one and a half or two units on it and then all the way up to that one today <laughs> where it's just a straight up like error yeah. and so i'll put even more on it because the line is so ridiculous but uh that you know that usually doesn't happen um but yeah what going back to the like the model that we were talking about how i start with the model and then kind of adjust a little bit so if our model says team is going to win by like six. And then I think oh, our model has been a little bit wrong on this team. So I actually think this team is going to win by seven. Um, and then let's say like the sports book spread thinks that has that team winning by four and a half. So that's like, we have them winning by two and a half more than what the sports book does. So I'm like sort of confident in that. I think I would probably put maybe like a unit on that, but let's say we have them winning by like, five points more than what the sports books say then i'd probably maybe go more like one and a half or possibly two units so it just depends like how much how off i think their spread or their total is um and usually like is it's within that range of like three four five six 40 points today was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if, it, if it's like one point off i probably won't even bet it that's close <laughs> enough that i'll just like leave it alone yeah, I don't know how they messed the Maryland one up that badly. I feel like that's, yeah. 
<laughs> I was like, 125? It's like 60 points a team. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> no, in fact, that game's going on right now. And I mean, I can pull the score here. I, I have no doubt that it's going to clear that line. Yeah. That, that's the type of thing you do not see in like the NBA or the right. NFL or big men's leagues that are heavily bet on. It just doesn't happen. Stake of that caliber doesn't happen. But when it comes to women's games, you see it. And you know, another one, I don't know if you remember this, the WNBA All-Star game this past year, it was against Team USA, which means they were both going to at least like somewhat try a little bit. And yeah. Play like <laughs> sort of defense, maybe not like full out defense, but like a little bit compared to most All-Star games. But they set the line so high <laughs> because it was an All-Star game. I forget what it was, like 250 or something. And the game ended up at like 180. And people who were actually, I missed out on that one, unfortunately, but people who were quicker than I was were able to bet the under 250 and just, you know, hammer it. And it was, that line was not good. So uh, <laughs> yeah, with women's sports, sometimes they make mistakes and you can make money off of that too. I got the score up here. So right now it's in the third quarter still, and they're already at 113. Yeah, so they're going to hit that 125 pretty <laughs> We got 11 minutes to combine for 13 points. Yeah. That's what needs to happen. That's, I feel I'm okay about that. Barring like the players deciding to lay down on the floor for the rest of the game, for sure yeah. that's going to happen. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely a mess on the sports books part there, but good for you because I think that's going to be an easy one to win today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back to the very basic questions, but what like books have these lines for women's sports, like where have you been betting? Yeah. So it depends on what state you're in. So for me, I'm in Illinois um, and there are six uh, legal sports books in Illinois. And, there, you know, there's offshore ones too, which I don't think we would like officially endorse. <laughs> they're really too sketchy. So, you know, teach their own, but um the legal ones are the ones that you probably like see commercials for. So FanDuel, DraftKings, PointsBet. I know you're in Connecticut, so you have uh, legal sports betting there yes. too. So I, I, you at least have FanDuel and DraftKings, I think. Yeah, I know we at least have those too. It's very new here, it's just not legalized. Like yeah, this. okay. Do you ever see commercials for PointsBet? I don't I think so. Okay, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys have that one. Um, we have one called Bet Rivers here is another one. Um, I know a lot of places have Caesars is a big one. Um, not all of these have women's basketball lines, college basketball yet, because again, sports books, you know, the patriarchy, but FanDuel has, is the best right now. They have almost every game. I think I've seen, you know, since they didn't even add them till like three or four weeks ago at the beginning of the season, no one had these, but uh when FanDuel added them I think I've seen like 90 plus percent of games on there they have all the little ones you know Sacred Heart and these schools that people haven't heard of so that's pretty cool Caesars is another one that has them but they usually only have big games so ranked teams power conferences games like that you wouldn't find any you know random like MIAC or whatever those type of games on there DraftKings is kind of hit or miss uh they have them it seems like Whenever they feel like it, there's times <laughs> when there's like three days in a row where they don't have any. And then all of a sudden the next day they have like every game, including those little mid-majors. So uh, it's, pre it's pretty hit or miss. And then I haven't seen any yet this year on points bet, but I know that last year they had them in the tournament. So I assume they'll have them in the tournament game uh, again. I, I think once we get to March Madness into the tournament, because it's such a high profile event and more people will want to bet on it, I think that more options like more sports books will have these lines and more option more of them will have more games but for now that's kind of where it's at yeah i would agree i would expect come kind of march we'll probably see it pop up in more places but it sounds like FanDuel is a really good spot to look right now which i think is pretty widely popular in places where it is legal so but probably is a good start also for people that are like me that are like maybe i will start doing this i'm pretty sure at least in connecticut like FanDuel has all kinds of promos going where you get like a hundred dollars to bet for free or something for signing up 
because of yeah that. actually have you <laughs> handle yet no i have not so <laughs> i might yeah, be doing yeah, that we'll, after this we'll do until i send you a thing because we can both okay. get something i forget what it is but we both get something i'll send it to you okay send it anyone to who's you. listening <laughs> watching if you haven't signed up for FanDuel, let me know or megan because she'll be on there now and <laughs> let one of us know and, and you can get a bonus for using our referral code or whatever it is uh if you're listening <laughs> and sign up or for any of those others i think they all have something for referring to friends so yeah. let us know awesome yeah i'm looking forward to it because now i feel like i will at least know what i'm looking at when i open it up so it's a good starting place <laughs> yeah definitely um and yeah the, you know the other thing i wanted to say too i think about sort of my process and the like how I pick which games to bet on with our model and which one's not. Um, favorites have done a lot better than underdogs so far, and that may change at some point, which uh, once sports books sort of catch up and realize that, it's actually already changed a little bit. They're sort of moving in that direction. Favorites have been not as dominant in the last few weeks, but still over 50% of the time against the spread, I should say. Obviously, the favorites win all the time. <laughs> That's what the definition of favorite is, but against the spread, even uh, favorites win, you know, at least a little over 50%. And same thing with unders. Unders have been hitting more than over. So I don't know if you've noticed or, you know, anyone else who's been following the bets, most of my spread bets are on the favorite to, to cover, to win by more than that. And most of my totals bets are on the under, unless there's a mistake like today, <laughs> where the line is 40 points too low and I bet on the over, but most I'm going mostly favorites and unders. Um, so if our model likes an underdog or likes an over, I have to be more confident in that. Like our model would have to like it by a lot for me to bet on it. That makes sense. I feel like we've been seeing more low scoring games this season too. It just kind of feels like that's been yeah. more of it. So <laughs> awesome. All right. Anything else you want to leave us with on betting front? Um, yeah, I feel like we should, I should mention real quick too, the, you know, what we, we talked about this before we hopped on, but the, the player yes. props, if you want to call them on, there's only one website that I'm aware of. If anyone knows any others, send them my way, cause I'd love to get on there. But as far as I'm aware of, there's only one that does it. Prize picks is what it's called. And it's, uh, it's also one of those that's not legal in every state, but I think it's like 30 plus states have it. For some reason, it's not legal in some of the biggest betting states in the country, such as Nevada <laughs> and New Jersey, which doesn't make any sense to me, but they don't call it betting. So I, you know, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you can get on there and basically they have, again, it's not, it's, it's uh, like Caesars where it's not every game. It's only sort of the big power conference ranked type of teams. And even then it's only like the top one or two players on those teams. So, so your big name players that people know who they are, are going to be on there. And you can pick like over under a certain number of points over, no, over under a certain number of assists or a certain number of rebounds. And the one thing on that one is that you can't bet on just one. You have to pick anywhere from two through five. Um, and so you would like have to, I couldn't just bet on Caitlin Clark to score more than 27 and a half points, but I could, put a bet on like Caitlin Clark to go over 27 and a half points and like Nas Hillman to go over 10 rebounds or whatever. I don't know. What the number. And if both of those things happen, then you win money. Um, yeah. And they have sort of a complicated payout structure that I don't, you know, <laughs> have to down somewhere and I definitely don't remember all of them on the top of my head. So you'd have to go look that up, but depending on how many picks you make and how many of them are right is how much money you win. But that's pretty fun too, to, just look through the players and try to, you know, pick whether they're going to go over or under their certain stats. Yeah, that sounds fun. I feel like it's still probably an area that they could miss some things in the sports books because depending who teams are playing and stuff, there's definitely some like things you could probably pick out knowing the sport. Yeah, that could win you definitely. <laughs> um, there was an example of that too when I very first started doing it like a month ago. Uh, Elise Hurst on Oregon had been playing really well. Uh, but Oregon also didn't have India Rogers. They didn't have Tahina Pow Pow. And so Elise Hurst was getting all these minutes. And then uh, both those players came back in the backcourt and Elise Hurst still had her, her lines on prize picks were basically like what she was averaging on the season, which kind of makes sense in a lot of cases. But 
she was clearly not going to get enough minutes with those two healthy to reach those. So that was a great opportunity to just bet under, I think it was 11 and a half points or like under two and a half threes made or whatever, you know, um, just kind of go against the playing time there. Um, and so there, yeah, there's definitely opportunities like that too on, you know, in player props. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm excited to try all this out now that I actually understand what I'm looking at. So thank you, Calvin. <laughs> and for everyone listening, make sure you're following Calvin on Twitter and the Wet's Best hashtag on her Hoop Stats account too. If you're interested, you can see all the bets that he's placing there. It's probably an easy place to start if you're trying to figure out where to put your money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's um, and you know, go subscribe to the website as well. Twenty dollars a year, you can make that with one bet. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. Yeah, just look up and down the model and and kind of familiar familiarize yourself with it. It's pretty fun. Definitely. And you're humble, so you're probably not going to say this, but I'm pretty sure you saw a tweet that you has like, what was it, 13, 14 straight days of winning? So it, that, that he's actually ended up on <laughs> he knows what he's talking that about. That did happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is, that ended on Tuesday, but and we're recording this on Thursday, but it was 13 straight um, before that days of winning money. It's always a Tuesday. Tuesdays get you because the, the, <laughs> the, the, I was telling Aaron this, the, the slate is so small. There's like nine total games across yeah. the country. So it's just such a high variance when you only bet on like two or three or four games. Like it's very easy to either win them all or lose them all. Right. It's never going to happen on a Saturday when there's a thousand games and you bet on 20 of them, you know, but yeah, yeah it's, it's been a good run. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it makes sense. Too. Tuesday is a big, like big 12 day too. And that conference is that in this is a conversation for another episode, but it makes no sense. <laughs> the weird conference. I, I yeah. lost a big bet on Iowa State against Texas yeah. last night because that game from a month ago that I talked about earlier when the Jones sisters were out, Iowa State got pounded. And I thought like this is that our model liked Iowa State and it made sense because now that the Jones sisters back, this is a revenge game. Still got pounded. I don't know how Texas did that, but um, yeah, so, I don't know. Some conferences are weird. <laughs> Yeah, Texas Tech beat someone too, right? They beat some ranked team. I forget who. They did win. Who did they beat? Oh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That's right. Oklahoma's on a slide. Yeah, that was amazing. Unfortunately, did not bet on Oklahoma. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so Texas Tech now has a grand total of three wins in the Big 12. They have all come (laughs) up for a ranked team, though. (laughs) Make it make bets. I don't know. Yeah, it almost has. If you win three games in the Big 12, you're almost bound to beat at least one ranked team. Yeah, I'm sure half of them are. <laughs> yeah, I think over half the Big 12 has been ranked at some point. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's, it's been fun, but definitely like a big turn, I feel like, for them this season. It's not good. It's, it's, it's been a long time coming for that league to have have this sort of parity. So. Yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure Baylor's still inching their way up to just win it all again. <laughs> yeah, they might sneak it out, but it's yeah. not a foregone conclusion like it was. all right well thanks calvin for joining me yeah thanks for having me well that's all for today's episode thanks again for listening as always make sure you rate like and subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to us also be sure to check out the stats site at herhoopstats.com for all the model that we were talking about on the podcast as well as all the stats you need for the ncaa and wmba seasons especially with the ncaa tournament tournament fast approaching here. Be sure you're subscribed to our free newsletter on Substack to get all of our best content in your inbox daily. And make sure you're following us on social media at Her Hoop Sets on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks again for listening.